few other things in terms of early experience, and this is a whole other domain of the disease, which is being exposed to all sorts of infectious thingies. And this is a really interesting provocative literature floating around. There's a far higher than expected chance rate of schizophrenics whose mothers were exposed to a number of different viruses in third trimester of pregnancy. Ah, some sort of perinatal stressor, pathogenic challenge to the system. When you look at the genomes of schizophrenics, they have a much higher than expected rate of viral DNA that has been inserted in there, things called retroviruses. Tec the technical matters don't matter. The main thing is more evidence of higher exposure to viral pathogens. An elevated history of neonatal viral infections. And then the coolest one of all, which has to do with a protozoan parasite, not a virus or a bacteria, but this protozoa called Toxoplasma gondii. And tox not gondii in the Gandhian sense, but probably because it's even pronounced differently. Okay, how are you pronouncing it these days? Gandhi, Gandhi, because there's two eyes at the end, which the old Mahatma never quite came up with. But this parasite manages to get more eyes in there than he did. So it's uh, Toxoplasma gondii, as everybody knows. Toxoplasma is interesting. It has this interesting life cycle. It reproduces in the gut of cat. It comes out in cat feces. Feces are eaten by rodents. Now in rodents, and Toxo's evolutionary challenge has been to figure out how to get rodents inside cat stomachs. And Toxo does this amazing thing, which my lab is doing some work on, including Patrick, and looking at the thing that Toxo does is it makes rats begin to like the smell of cats and to go up and check it out. And soon you are inside the stomach of the cat and completing Toxo's life cycle. How it does it is incredibly interesting and slowly emerging. So what's going on with Toxo in humans? People who are infected with Toxo have a higher than expected rate of mild neuropsychological disinhibition a little bit of problems with frontal regulation of behavior, higher than expected rates of serious car accidents, higher than expected rates for the same degree of depression of attempting suicide, a picture of a certain degree of impulsivity. Not big effects, but nonetheless it pops up there. But parallel with that, from day one, there's also been a literature showing that toxoplasma exposure increases the risk of schizophrenia. Individuals whose mothers were exposed to toxo during pregnancy or looking at schizophrenics and looking in their blood and seeing higher than anticipated levels of antibodies against toxoplasma, evidence of this whole world of a connection between cats and schizophrenia, and all sorts of hints there, very, very slowly emerging field. It is a real finding and it is a well replicated one. There's some connection there. So where does these genes having to do with immune function come in? Maybe this is pertinent to this world of viral correlates of schizophrenia, parasitic ones, nobody knows. Finally, what have we got? This challenge that we're going to have with when you read the depression chapter, all of that, is how do you put these pieces together? How do you put together adolescent stress with prenatal viruses, with uh, enlarged ventricles, with funny genetic abnormalities here? There isn't a very good integrated model at this point to how to put the pieces together. The field has not gotten that far.